I want to explain first how all this was possible. The Contemporary Art Committee welcomes Master Chen Chen Tsung. We want to give a special thanks to the Gardiner Museum, to the Ontario Society of Artists, to the Museum of Northern History, to Propeller Art Gallery, and the individuals who made possible this event. Francis Patella, Michel Letard, Sama Koka Kokabi, Juan Hai Yun. Just so you guys know, she is Mr. Chen's wife, but I'm going to explain how all this was possible. I am your host, Cesar Forero, and I am an artist and a curator, and basically the person behind many of these things that we do. Uh, 20 years ago, I was at the University of Waterloo doing my master's degree. The University of Waterloo gave me $8,000 to do an internship program. And I said, $8,000, I'm going to blow them all. And I'm going to go as far as I can go. And I wanted to find a very interesting artist. Thanks to my professor in that moment, Bruce Taylor and the University of Waterloo, they, he told me that there was a lady in Taiwan who was the interpreter for the Taiwanese, no, the Spanish embassy in Taiwan, and that I could connect with her. I saw Mr. Chen's work and I was fascinated. I said, of course, I want to go and do my internship and be with him. So I called Pilar and I offered myself and I said, can I go and work for your husband for three months? No pay, no charge, nothing. I just want to be there and I want to meet you and I want to be. So he took the offer and thanks to all that is that he is here nowadays. So I'm going to explain also how is all this, who is the contemporary art committee and how is this possible? Uh, before I start the, night, the land acknowledgement, we would like to acknowledge that the Gardiner Museum operates on the ancestral land, ancestral and traditional territories of the Mississauga of the Credit and the Anishinaabek this Chipewa, the How De No Sa Uni, and the Wendat peoples, and is now home to many diverse First Nations, Inuit, and Metis people. You might have noticed as you walk up the stairs of the museum that you were greeted at the entrance by the, fra the fragmented vessel called Talking Earth. This work by Mohawk National Na Nation multidisciplinary artist Santi Smith serves as a, as a guiding figure for the museum's present and future. And we hope that Talking Earth can welcome us together in this space where we might all free free to share, learn, and create. The community we work in is the home to many indigenous peoples from across Turtle Island. And we are grateful to have the opportunity to learn and live on this land. Thank you very much. The Contemporary Art Committee, the Contemporary Art Committee in CAC has the mission to bring contemporary art to Kirkalay and is a committee consistent of a handful of local motivated volunteers ranging from 34 to 80 years of age. The CAC was created 16 years ago and has since partnered with the Museum of Northern History. A few of our successes include the Contemporary Art Exhibition, which takes place every March and April at the museum. In this exhibit, we host and present the work of both national and international guest artists during the month of March and April, plus an open call for submissions. In 2022, we created an art and culture fair, which was a, was a success with approximately 400 participants and will repeat in 2024. We have created a fundraising gala, CAG, which takes place every October at the Heritage North Convention Center, and it is already in the first in the sixth year. 
thanks to this committee is that we are able to fundraise and bring Mr. Mr. Chen to here to all of us. Master Chen Chen Sun is a world renowned and awarded Taiwanese artist. His work is stand at several public and private collections, among them Taipei Fine Art Museum, Instituto Estalade de RFA Gru per la Ceramica Castelli in, in Italy, Kaohsiung Museum of Fine Arts, Jinko Ceramics Museum, the State Foundation of Cultural and Arts in Hawaii, USA, La Ville de Chateau in France, Museum of Modern Art Ceramics Art in Jifu, Japan, National Museum of History in Taiwan, National Taiwan Museum of Fine Arts in Taiwan, White Rabbit Gallery in Sydney, Australia, Our Bank in Taiwan. This is among of many private collections. The introduction to this video is the very simple works viewed in, in the space are as sober as I am, paying homage to the land that nurtured me by exhibiting my work in my hometown has been the ideal that I have carried out for many years. My simple and modest works try to explore the essence of life and are themselves the investigation of my own being. After experiencing various setbacks and hardship for a long time, I have finally returned to my land on the bank of Sushi Sea stream to complete my great work. Sorry, I probably killed that pronunciation. The Chen Museum. These are the words of Master Chen Chen Hsun. And a quick introduction to his museum, and I leave later for questions. So, hold on a second, sorry. Okay. Sorry. Yeah. Um, what, what, multiple participants or only one participant? Only one participant. That more people will come in. I know, so they'll automatically come in. Okay. If you turn it off, so you don't have to deal with it. Yeah, turn it off. Okay. And then take on better, yeah? Okay. 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 And then this one will be. For everything. Everything's fine. Okay. okay, so I go back to the video. And uh, I'm going to. No, share the video. Okay. I, I think I can do it from there and the, the video will share by itself. Yeah.
Um,
Thank you. 
I don't know, I think I told to somebody is okay. But more important what it is here. Than it is.
Okay, so Pilar is going to have a microphone there. If somebody wants to have a, a question, just raise your hand and she will bring you the microphone. I'm oh, sorry, Michelle, sorry. Uh, sorry. Uh, what we're going to have in the video is uh, a little bit of the history of how all this came about and his work. He will show us a little bit of his early works, then some of the public commissions, then some works, and at the end, some of the um, you, um, functional objects that he creates. I'm going to be changing image images quickly. There are a lot of images and occasionally he will stop and tell me where he wants to talk. Thank you very much for uh, coming, and uh, I'm from Taiwan. <laughs> That's <laughs> more relaxing and yeah, be here. I uh come back, I came back to Taiwan in uh, 1984 from uh, Spain, where I uh, study abroad there. Uh, at, at that time, Taiwan is in a kind of a transition from a, a martial law period to a, a people kind of claim more the current uh, the the uh, democratic kind of a uh, uh, state social status. At that time, almost the kind of uh, every month or uh, every week, people are uh, demonstrate uh, protest to gain a uh, democrat. Um, in that uh, more kind of a chaos, uh, social status, people are kind of a more, uh, they will try to uh, worship something they saw uh, on, the, on the street. Uh, for, for example, people when they they would kind of uh, bend it or they will wrap a red uh, strip on the rock and by that form they will kind of uh, they will try to um, seek for relief from that kind of uh, object and if, uh, for the upper social status they will turn their um, they will spend their energy to buy stock, stocks and for the lower class people would like to uh, like uh, invest money on lottery and for the lottery, there is a special form that the people have have to guess in the number. So they uh, people will kind of seek inspirations from those objects they worship. Uh, 
呃，早期的作品的话，就是在做一些啊，人与自然的那种对照的关系。嗯。So when I went back to Taiwan, I observed this phenomenon, and then I、uh, reflect on that, and I'm thinking about、uh, the relation, the relationship between human and nature. 所以我会在作品上面的话，放一些呃金箔跟所谓的铜丝带，代表的话是呃在宗教上，它对于自然的那种崇敬。So I would uh I would kind of attach the gold foil and the real silk into the uh into the clay work I I I'm working on. That would represent a kind of a a worship or Uh, a religion's、um, meaning on that word. Tell him, tell him that I will start changing the images, and he tells me when I want to, when he wants me to stop. Okay. He says he will, uh, just will, uh, fold the photo, and then you can tell him when you want to stop. Okay. 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 Okay, in this area, in this work, I attach the gold foil and the, the red silk. 代表人跟自然跟神当中的话，为了要求所谓的乐破的云海的话，那那种需求。To represent the need that people and uh to um to uh to ask the god what is the number that uh is kind of uh better for them to 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 put to buy the lottery. <laughs> I was I was born in the place where there's a countryside and there is a lot of、uh, farming activity. So, I will observe the so-called uh, the whole world changing. So, I will. Uh, I used I I love to observe the、uh, life circling, like the four season life circling. Rice, rice field. Uh, that's rice field. Yeah, that's the rice field. This is my uh, early first one. This is my early first work, artwork. What is it made of? Oh, this is what made it. This is pearl. This is clay, made of clay. Is it all fired clay? They are, uh, burned wood. Yes, it is burned. Yeah, fired. Is it burned? This is burned. 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 Uh, do you mean clay or this, this artwork or? Well, some of the bigger pieces, like are they hollow? Some、uh, so, okay, clay. Clay when you make it, it's it's just hollow inside, so it's not heavy. So. Okay. Uh, uh, okay. Yeah. Uh, the 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 artwork of clay must be uh have a hollow inside. Is 
it's ceramic and wood, yeah. He, ma he marriage some, some material like ceramic wood, ceramic and metal, ceramic and, and steel, or sometimes ceramic and aluminum. There are different places. And this one is ceramic and wood. Okay. He liked the mixture or the marriage between uh, different materials in the clay. Okay. Presumably, after the clay has been uh, fired, then he uh, embedded those woods. pigmentation that comes after is that a second firing when you pigment it? Uh, 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 he kind of uh, first build the, uh, the the artwork uh, in in his original form. Then after firing, uh, after uh, smart smart uh, smoldering, then he kind of uh, attach those uh, piece work. Uh, yeah, finally kind of attach those uh, piece work. There are different processes. Uh, some of them, for example, he fires with with wood to to create that ash effect. Yeah, and some other ones he used iron, and the iron covers the surface of the of the clay. But he wouldn't have to fire it for a second time. No, uh, sometimes he fires a few times the pieces. Yeah, solo like uh, after kind of beginning uh, fire, like it's this cut fire, then he put those work into a, a, a bucket and then uh, he used some uh, smoldering uh, technique, like a yeah, mixture with some wood and to make it more uh, colorful. This is kind of collected in a uh, Japanese some sorry some, some museum and this is uh, quite heavy actually yeah mm. because this is large kind of pieces of work. I'm, I'm curious about the other um, painting influences and also who were the sculptors that you think我看問他他有沒有哪一位像是藝術家就是啟發你做一些這些編就是像是繪畫或上色的或者是一些哪一些雕塑家啟發你這些就是靈感沒有了因為我家裡面的話我兩個哥哥都是老藝術的現在已經
啊，有还有没有有没有有没有其他的一些对，有没有一些其他的一些绘画家或者是一些雕塑者，对，对对你来说比较有启发的。Okay, OK， 对啊，这个就是自己的话哈、哦，自己呃摸索出来的。嗯嗯，摸索呃，然后是 the inspiration like come from his uh experiences。其实我我大哥的话，他是西化，在学校当教授。那二哥的话是国画，是台湾最大的一个补习班。那我。只有选择做一笔的东西的。His two brothers are、uh, the first one is a professor in、uh, a art school and is a like a most a Western、uh, style painting and his second brother is a, also、uh, a very、uh, famous artist and uh, more uh, uh, more good at the、uh, uh, Chinese、uh, Chinese style painting. 哦，你有 ？Sorry, so sorry, could you repeat your? Do you make scale models of your pieces before you make the actual piece? 你有做一些呃模型，就是一些呃在做一些大的作品之前有做比较小的 ？Yes, he did. Yes, sir. I want to complement something to Janet's question.、Uh, we need to also understand the different background. the The way we like to work in America and Europe, we tend to think it's almost like the names. When we put our name,、uh, if my name is Caesar, after Caesar and Alexander for an Alexander the Great. So my dad had huge aspirations of me.、Yeah. So that's brutal. That's a lot of weight on our shoulders. But when we think about Asian culture, notice that the names themselves are completely different, and its uniqueness and being that singular person, what characterizes that person. So I I feel that that is part of the question. Yeah, we I, we have education and we have a background and there is a, but something that. Push me and move me to go to Taiwan and learn from there, or in in Asia, in Taiwan, in in China or Japan, is that I see that the artists there look more for that uniqueness, for finding themselves, and later creating the work. That's kind of like how I see it. That doesn't mean that they don't go to school and they have an incredible background into the arts, but it's that uniqueness and that representation what characterizes the work. Is when he creates that, which I saw he creates it. Is it does he create it in that large sense right away, or does he? You see, when he still creates, yeah, he has he has the idea that the piece is going to have certain kind of a scale, but of course, to go directly into the max scale, it's better just to create a scale model. And create a small piece. The, the the conception goes into having a, a certain piece that is malleable, easy, and then it changes into the big scale model. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
when his studio in that time, it was a, a pretty large studio and there were four more artists into the big area of the spice. It was something similar to imagine the distillery district. So, and one of the artists that was that was Yun Shan Li, who actually came and she was one of my guest uh, residents. Uh, she was interpreting for me all the time, time translating. And every time that I was in trouble, I would call Pilar and say, <laughs> he wants me to do something. So I, we manage, we find a way. Uh, he, he mostly worked on his own. And no assistance. Just, just him. <laughs> when when I was there, it was it was kind of a ritual every day. Because he would get up in the morning and before he even started working, it was more important the garden. So he will go to the garden and I was there waiting to see what he wanted me to do. Sometimes I had the task and I will start right away because that's my energy and my dynamic. I want to be hands-on all the time. But he would just keep me there looking at him and learning from, from seeing. And then later he would say, it's tea time. And I'm like, okay, tea time, but I want to work. <laughs> and after tea time, he will tell me what he wanted to do. But it was more important that I had to understand his set of mind and what it was the spiritual connection that he was looking. And then, so then the gardening was really important and the collecting of the fruits and working on the bonsais and all that part, which I do bonsai as well. So. Is that where you start with the bonsai No, I did. I learned bonsai since I was 14 years old. In, in high school. The pieces are beautiful. This is totally beautiful. Mm -hmm. Extraordinary pieces. Uh, who is buying, are these being bought by families um, like old children in, in the galleries, in, in the buildings? Because I didn't see the mention in North America. Yeah, um, I'm going to show you as we go. The, the, the next section, this account at first the early works. The next section you will see several of the public works that you see it in, in many different cities. And the works are in several museums in the, around the world. And homes and places and many artists. Most of these pieces are already, yeah. So this one, this one you want to, this one is created with what? Uh, early, earlier, it's a, a combination of water and space. In the middle, it's a water. Something that he explains to me when we were working occasionally about this is life is a cycle. And his cycle, it was very important that we are born, we grow up, we get older, we get sick, and then we're gone. The same thing happens when he incorporates water. The idea is not to add water every single day. The idea is to put the water there and see how the water is sitting in the sculpture until the water is gone. And then it's time to give it life again and put water again in the piece. Uh, when when you start to planning a, a project or making the project, you will start from a small model.
在课堂中的话，佛，因为佛一直喜欢探讨所谓土的话，它本身的话，它的可塑性到底有多大？有的话，可塑性的话，它到底的话，是呈现什么样的一种感觉？呃、uh, ，when I kind of doing the work, uh, this is a low temperature clay work, and I will try to uh explore the flexibility of the clay, the range, uh, how I can present them. So, then I will just directly, ah, uh, use clay, and then draw. So, the so-called this is called high temperature. So here I directly use the clay to uh, make the creation, and this is the low temperature clay. Uh, it, it's on the uh, canvas. Yeah, it's canvas. But the this one's this one's are okay. yeah, canvas and clay combinations. Most importantly, I think there is a kind of a large range you can explore to uh, making the uh, to uh, to make the clay like a high temperature, middle temperature, and low temperature. So here I directly use a uh, clay and put it on on a painter. So and use some uh, uh, and adapt the low temperature clay concept to making this artwork. Oh, 就是说那边后面是画布，然后你不是用什么颜料，你是直接用陶土在上面。陶土的话，对，粘着跟陶土两个混染，还有所谓的用那个啊氧化铁，就是氧化物。氧化铁的话，就是会沾满各种画，氧化铁混合，然后再去做画。Yeah, it's yeah, it's it's a kind of mixture of uh uh adhesive of clay. And uh, oxidize fire, uh, iron and use those uh, material to uh, making this uh, like painting. Uh, okay, there, there are different pieces. There are some of the pieces that are like wall pieces. They they go through processes that we are that we are familiar with, like the low fire temperatures, the high fire, or any of that. But he likes to include iron. Or of the smoke to create the effects that he does. It. Some of them, like the pieces that we saw on the wall that were ceramic, uh, depending if there is low fire or high fire, he fires them different and separate to create that effect. These ones, like the one that we're seeing in this moment, they, he also uses is a, a canvas or a linen, and then he uses a mixture of creating the clay and covering the surface on canvas. To create a similar effect on the canvas, like he was producing on the on the ceramics, so there is the relation of the of the bidimensional and the two dimensional work because there. Are, but some of them are pretty heavy, even though if even if it, it go on the wall, so we'll see some of those as well. Uh, because he likes to explore the ceramic art from the aspect of the uh, flexibility of the uh, clay and the temperature.
We're going to start seeing, we're going to start seeing now some of the installation works. Uh, okay. uh, I also work on the in installation art, and this one, uh, this one is the uh, some bricks and the uh, uh, smoldering. So you can see there is a different color. And this one, this piece is the my first work that been uh, have an ex exhibition outside Taiwan. This is uh, ex an ex exhibition in Japan. And for this work is in a gallery in Taiwan. Then 嗯, this one has some uh, political connotation and it was consist by it was uh, created by three experts three artists the lower part is from a expert uh, like a, uh, like doing filming and uh sorry, and the clay part in the middle is uh, is created by uh, master chen and uh, yeah as, as as uh, mentioned before, this uh, this artwork has some kind of political um, meaning because during that time it was a, a famous like a white terror in in Taiwan. It was a combination of uh, pictures and the, the clay. Does that, mean, does that mean this is an integration of several artists? Three artists. Three artists. <coughs> and this part is a public art. This one is This one is a public art. And this is like a, a nest, uh, the bird nest, and this is place is the uh, uh, national uh, park. This is another art, uh, public art. Notice that the people that were asking were curious about the scale models. Notice that the image on the right side is the scale model from the actual installation that later on came out. What is this? Like, remember in the old times that we have a mouse? Yes. So this mouse is made out of bronze. And the idea is that you can go and sit on the mouse. A mouse, you remember? Is that it's, a, it's made out of bronze, and the idea is that you can go and sit and meditate on the mouse. This artwork, uh, this public artwork is uh, movable. Yeah. 
So there is a ball that moves and then it falls down on this. Sorry, and it falls down here. Right. This piece, oh, that other piece we just saw, large. So this piece, you have an armature that supports this? An armature, an internal structure that would support? Um, there, there is a ball which kind of fallen from the middle of this, uh, like the the part of the structure. And yeah, this is the same piece. Mm. And there will be a ball like a falling down from uh from this part. Mm. Yeah, and they will kind of uh, fall down to this this part. Okay. Okay, so let me explain that piece. Uh, so what happened, like you said, you wanted to know if there is a structure, there is a structure, because in the middle, there is a ball that is rolling constantly through this sculpture, goes through the middle, up in the sculpture, falls through the ceiling, and then the piece that goes on the wall, it does like, almost like the game, you know, that the ball goes like this and does like this, and well, that, did you see my dancing? And then once it gets to the ground, it goes again on the ground and it goes up again right. through the piece. And, and it's non, non-stop. It's infinite, the movement. How is it not? It's the same sculpture is that he's using the entire space. So one piece is here and the other piece is there, but the circle of the of the wall of the ball moving is completing the, 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 the idea of the sculpture. This one is in a power plant. The, the, yeah, the work is put in a power plant. And this one is uh, in the community, like yeah, public art in community. Okay, and this one is a public art in the uh, the most famous school in Taiwan, uh, National Taiwan University. Uh, I, I like to build an environment where people can kind of uh, uh, sit in there relaxing and uh, thinking about uh, their life or, or, or things. And this art piece is in a uh, 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 in a kind of national museum in Taiwan. The, the previous one? The previous Like thicker iron. Thick, thick, iron, iron. Yeah, green and yeah, and yeah. 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 This one is a baseball. Oh yeah, this one. Oh yeah, this one's like a baseball. Excuse me, I'm very interested because. Well, you might have the winter, but what, what finish does that material have so that we can maintain that uh, type of luster and shine? Because it's beautiful, but 
does it last a long time or, or what happens to it after a while? It? Oh, how can you? It has been put there for 10 years and it, it would maintain the same shape. But what is the material? Originally, I want to design this by clay, but uh, yeah, but my peers don't accept this kind of concept, so I use this with bronze. um, since at that time it was an initial stage for the uh in uh for the public uh public uh, art uh, public installations. So those reviewers cannot accept the concept to use clay to to be part of the in, in use uh, use clay in the public uh, installations. Because clay is very uh, fractured, it is easily broken. And nowadays it's more acceptable. So I recently have a piece of work uh, use clay as the main material. This, this, this is the mold for my uh, private, uh, my own museum. This is my studio. This is the uh, tea, uh, tea room. This is the first floor of my uh, my museum, my art museum. Okay. For this part, I want to uh, express that uh, this is a kind of uh, an environment uh, where I uh, live in, in. So this is the central, uh, central mountain in Taiwan. And this is some kind of a river part, like uh, yeah, represent a river part. And uh, I, I, I'm living in kind of a 
um, like in uh, like nearby rivers. So this part is, is that kind of uh, some uh, form. Uh, so, 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 so I, I, um, yeah, this, this, this part represents the river and the, some, uh, some, uh, some place nearby the river. And because this is the, uh, the environment where I grew up. So I, I also kind of uh, I reserved this place and to have some plants here. And uh, they are to kind of uh, reminisce the environment where I grew up. You guys remember that that was in the video that the rain was. uh, yeah, so uh, continue the so where 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 I, uh, I live is in a uh, river. That river is the biggest stream in, in Taiwan. It's called uh, Zhou Sui Xi. So it's very uh, fertilized space, fertilized, uh, fertilized uh, place. So there, there, there are a lot of uh, horticulture like like this. So there, there will be uh, there are exhi exhibitions of this horticulture every year. It could the this space what is very fertile because of the of the kind of land and the kind of water that moves through the river. The river carries a lot of nutrients, so that makes this space very very special, very unique. And that's why many people cultivate bonsai and do the bonsai techniques exactly in this area. And they host two bonsai exhibitions of the year on that area. And that's where also the rice and all this. Products grow. So, I hope that we can come back to each other and have such a diverse variety of plants to share. So, when I went back to my uh, hometown, I want to combine clay and the plants. And this is the I have uh, my uh, my tea set, and I drink tea here. And when looking outside from my uh, tea room, this is this uh, this artwork, and this artwork re uh, represents some uh, them meaning, which is called um, uh, hold, holding a flower and smile. It's a kind of a Zen uh, scene. Uh, now this this piece of work is uh in 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 an exhibition in um in an art uh, museum. Okay. When we were talking about the influences, what he told me about this piece is that Buddha came wearing nothing. And he was just with the hands 
their hands and holding a flower. Mm. And the, the only thing that he was carrying was a smile. And, and nobody understood what Buddha was saying, what, it was, what was happening, but only one person looked at him and smiled and understood that that was all that we needed, that was the message. So this, this bonsai does the same thing, is carrying the flower. This is the second artwork I made, uh, like a, in, in a mixture of uh, clay and plants. And it was set it in a place where uh, when I go up to the, uh, go up the stairs to the second floor, it's, it was set in the middle of the stairs. This is the second floor of my museum. This is outside of the second floor. Okay. So it's, it's a, once you fire it, it's ceramic. Hmm? This one. Ceramic. This is clay. Yeah, clay. 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 <laughs> this is the place where I ate breakfast. No, he he lives part time in, in Taipei. He goes to the museum and also his studio. But most of the time, he's living in the studio that is not that far from the from the museum. And, and th this is the place where I uh, go up to the third floor. And those are some of the collections of the scale models. Uh 啊，到我家里面住的地方呢，我现在的家呃那个彰化的工作室啊，我会带你去所谓的茶室的空间。嗯，the most of the place I I I have like my studio, my museum, and the place I work in Taipei, I have a set up a tea room where I can kind of relaxing and then can. Contemplation there and uh, enjoy a, 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 a nice tea. Something that I want to tell you is that when people come to the museum, the idea that he has about the museum is that people need time to come and relax and meditate in the space. So it's not only to see the sculptures, but also enjoy the space. So that's what there is a space for tea, there is a space for, for meditation. And when people book to come to the museum, there is only a certain number of people that are allowed at the time, no more than eight up to 10 people if they are from the same group. Because the idea is that the people should scatter and find the place where they can meditate inside of the space. This is what I 
Uh, this, uh, did we have to move for for it? And this part is um uh, somewhere in uh uh this this is the back side in my uh museum, the first row uh back back part uh the back part of the first floor and and most of this uh our work structure are made by clay. And because there is a roof on the top of this uh this structure, and this place is where the uh the uh, the droplet the water will uh, fall down. So everything in the museum is designed by him, even the sinks. I, I was surprised when I saw them. So These are his two sinks. So they're ceramic and glass, that's it. Uh, he, yeah, like you just said, he designed all the kind of uh, part of his uh, museum, like the basin and the uh, plates and the uh, table. And uh, so he wants to explore all the possibility with clay. This is his studio. This this is studio. Mm -hmm. Somebody asked before who influenced him. I'm more interested how many people are coming to him and learning from him. <laughs> <笑>之前有有問過 大概都是這樣的,很少在外面的話。沒有,沒有。Yeah, <笑> not, not too many, because I have a kind of more uh, simple life. Like, uh, yeah, my, uh, my daily routine is quite regular. And uh, um, it's also kind of uh, sort of uh, unfortunate that uh, I, I cannot even to hire an assistant. Yeah. Yeah, most, of, most of the work is done by me, my, myself, yeah. The only thing that he always told me is that we learn more if we look than if we hear the words. I hear him saying that to me many times. You don't need me, you don't need to speak my language, just look. Thank you. 
this is the place where I uh, fire those clay uh, kiln. Is the kiln is the kiln, and he also has a crate. So then, when he makes these very large pieces, later he needs to move them. It's just the crate and cranking the crate that moves everything. And... So this is all oxidation. Yeah. We're we're entering now to see the functional objects. Uh, here, here, this part we are trying to uh, present some more uh, practical icons. And this part, uh, I also wanted to uh, make something that I will be, I will use daily life. And we people like to use, uh, like to drink tea. So here I make a teapot. Uh, sometimes what other people define is practical, but, but that couldn't apply to me. <laughs> Uh, this is the a uh, a tea ball I made. Normally, the ball we made is, uh, I'm not sure if this part I translate correctly, sorry. This is more like a crystal, crystallized glazing. And then when you kind of hold that ball, it means some kind of a uh, uh, a communication between human and the, the god. Yeah, and, and this part why well, I want to convey a, a kind of a sense that. I can uh, communicate with God, like a, a human communicated with God when holding these uh, art pieces. Uh, what he used to explain to me with the functional objects is that when we are when we have a hold a ball in our hands and we are looking through the glazes, it's almost like we are seeing the spectrum of the sky. We are seeing way beyond the what our eyes are seeing. We are seeing the universe, the same thing we are seeing in the, on the ball. Now, for the people that are interested in technique or uh, when he was making the mark to create, he said, this is reference to abstraction because I'm making the opportunity for people to connect with the God through seeing an abstract piece that is de depicted on the, on the surface of the ball. And then the glazes will create that transparency that will give us the other dimension. When, when we were there, when I was working for him, there was a competition or a presentation that they wanted to do a teapot and he participated in that presentation. We made a, a random number. I don't remember exactly the number, something like 87 times the same teapot. And then we did almost like a beauty competition to select one that it was the perfect one. And I was like, that's not what we do. We make one and it's beautiful and that's it. No, he made 87, I think it was 87 of the same one. And then we selected the one with the better glazes. Then we selected from the ones with the better glazes, the ones that when you tilted, the dripping, it was just the dropped without holding or licking. And then the mark, it was the one that when you hold it, your hands will not burn and you, you will not be hot. So we're like. 
So there was a lot of thinking. <laughs> Uh, previously, what we have uh, seen is more like represent the culture from the East, which is the like a tea culture. And now, uh, and uh, recently, I started to thinking about the Western culture. So here, I kind of um, incorporate some coffee. Concept. Yeah, and, and this is the uh the tool used to uh to 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 make coffee it's like a filter, yeah, it's like a filter. So this is for uh, coffee dripping. Yeah, this is the uh the first generation that I designed. It's a, a coffee set. And this is second generation. I I want to tell this one. It was also that he prepared, and we had all the tea, and then there were the little biscuits that had been cut, one biscuit, and we split it. For all the people that were sitting at the at the tea time, and I was about to get my bite, and he said no. I was like, what did I do? I screw up again. And then he just said no, wait. And he went out and he picked the flowers and he put the flowers on each one of the cups. So then, once we have seen the flowers, we have the complete universe, and then we can have the tea. <laughs> Yeah, he, yeah, he said the uh the, the coffee bean is is the core of, of the uh coffee culture. And but he wanted to uh, emerge to more uh, like a, a, a thinking from the east. So here he tried to uh, build another another scenario, like we just mentioned, to yeah to kind of a little bit um, uh, make make the whole uh, process more um, rich. This this is third generation. Uh, there is a kind of a uh, tea art uh, from Japan, and now that that kind of uh, concept is uh, also kind of emerges in in Taiwan. And but here I'm I'm trying to uh, think if if when we drink about coffee, can we have the same uh like similar culture like. Mm -hmm. I can I can tell you something because we've spoken about this. Uh, when I was learning how to drink tea, he said, just don't drink, uh, sorry, <laughs> no, don't, just don't drink the tea. You have to take in the ceremony, take the time to breathe the, from the tea and think in the land where this tea came from. So later on, I was like, oh yeah, I, when we, I'm coming from Colombia and in Colombia, when we have the coffee, the coffee grows and depending on the trees that they plant on the different sections, they have also the taste. If they put several citric trees, the, the, tea, the coffee will be a little acid. 
if the it is more in the area where they're growing the peaches is more like fruity and flavory and etc so then there we're learning all these different variations and it will be the same theory with the tea and the coffee we are about to finish <laughs> For the white balls, is he using porcelain? The white ball, which balls, the, the balls. Oh, this uh, may, may say what is young is uh, porcelain uh, clay, porcelain clay. Uh, it's, it's, there is there is more like. Uh, for coffee, I I I think it's more proper to use uh ceramics, and but for tea, it's more proper for to use clay. Uh, this is uh, in my museum, which uh, represents separately the uh, cup, uh, the coffee, coffee set, and the tea set. So generally the main concept I want to uh, present today is uh, like a, the most important is two concepts from the uh, from the clay, the flexibility of the clay and the temperature. Uh, ho hopefully, hopefully, what I present today is a kind of a big uh, feast. For for you to uh, like uh, visualize the uh, our work I have made. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for everyone for coming today. Um, stay tuned. <laughs>